With everyone being stuck at home due to the current global situation, there seems to be a lot of people resorting to video games to pass the time. Consequently, one of these games is Rocket League, which has seen record player counts on both console and Steam, as more players either buy the game or hop back online to get their fix of car soccer. While some people play the game solely for fun and couldn't care less about their skill or rank, there are many of you out there who enjoy learning new mechanics, ranking up, bettering your skill, or just overall winning. There are many ways to improve, and a plethora of tutorials out there, some good and some bad. Hopefully mine are not the latter. Anyway, since we all have so much extra time on our hands to dedicate to improving rather than just playing, the next instalment of the 6 staples of Rocket League is here, as I've taken the liberty to compile a list of the 6 best drills that will help you instantly improve in Rocket League. Doing these for around 50 minutes a day, something which I think everyone can manage, will cause you to see a drastic change in your mechanics and skill, and hopefully that will reflect in your rank. So listen up Platinums, this is the video for you, to finally get rid of your bad teammates and earn your rightful place in Grand Champ. Just before the video starts, be sure to join my Discord and follow me on Twitter, the links to both in the description below, and it's a great way to follow the channel closer and interact with everyone. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe with notifications on to be alerted for future uploads and streams. It's free, so why not? Alrighty, so back to the video. These are drills that are available for everyone to try, so no need to stress if you're not a PC and can't use workshop maps. Whilst they can make them better, they are by no means necessary. To form a training program or warm up of sorts, you can do each of these drills for 10 minutes each, amounting to 50 minutes. It isn't 60 minutes because one of the drills is a more progressive type thing, however I will explain that soon. So without further ado, let's get started. The first drill is something that flies under the radar a lot of the time, especially in the lower ranks, and that is boost management and memorization. A lot of players have a heavy reliance on the large boost pads, causing them to often go to parts of the field that they shouldn't go to in order to get boost, which breaks rotation and pressure on the opponent. This is an extremely bad habit to have, and something I'm guilty of quite often. To practice this, go to your options whilst in free play and turn off unlimited boost in free play. This will mean you actually have to pick up pads in free play, rather than full boosting everywhere and likely wasting more fuel than your average Airbus A380. In all seriousness, it will force you to memorise the location of the small pads, which you will need to start relying on more than the big pads, and will help you practice maintaining a healthy boost count and prevents you from practicing things that you wouldn't be able to do in a real game. Flip resets. So give it a shot and try to go over all the small pads as much as possible, and whilst it may not be evident, it will make a huge difference in your gameplay as you'll be able to keep pressure and possession more often, leading to more wins and ultimately ranking up. The second drill is a little bit of an unusual one, and something you can't go into free play and practice for 10 minutes to say you've improved. It requires conscious effort and vigilance to understand and thus better. And this is mentality. You might be thinking, Halicool, how on earth can you duel your mentality? Finally scoring double flip resets won't even help this in the slightest. And you're right, it has nothing to do with how good you are, although better players generally have slightly better mindsets. Mentality is key to becoming a more consistent and better player, and can actually send you into higher ranks regardless of your skill. A good mentality consists of someone that doesn't throw out four for votes unless the game has no chance of being redeemed. No, I don't mean being down by two goals with a minute left, even that can be turned around. I mean, unless you are down by three plus goals with less than 20 seconds left, do not forfeit. The majority of the time you will not come back, however occasionally you will win, and those few times can result in a 20 plus MMR change, so you can see how it affects your rank. To work on this, just constantly give yourself positive self-talk. A good example of this is Scrub Killer, who constantly tells himself that he can win the game even if he is down. In my back pocket, that's an easy one. Come on, come on Cal, please focus, please focus on winning. Again, the idea of wholesome toxicity created by Sunless is a great method to use. So, constantly focus on your mindset, you should always be optimistic and positive towards games and training, and you will find that you may get a rank or skill boost despite no improvement in skill or mechanics. The third drill is something that will improve your aerial control significantly, and make yourself overall more comfortable with your car in the air, and that is to practice your aerial control in free play. 
Being able to move efficiently in the air and hit the ball where you want with power consistently is extremely important. Now this is very vague so I will explain it very specifically. There are a few drills you can do to practice this. Firstly, to learn to fly backwards. Jump off the back wall above the goals and practice flying to the opposite goals whilst facing backwards. It can be kinda awkward at first, but once you figure out the inversion, it will become muscle memory and will help you out in plenty of situations. Additionally, you can use the center circle of the field as a path to fly around, maintaining a constant height and speed like shown. If you feel comfortable, start air rolling to further test your ability. Once you've done this, you can use the pads around the edge of the field as cones of sorts and weave in and out of them like I am at the moment. Again, if you feel comfortable, add some air rolls. This can be extremely difficult, but doing it for 10 to 15 minutes a day can make a huge difference, so just try it out. The fourth tip is something that can fly under the radar a bit and not something that is focused on when people ask how to improve. I'm talking about recoveries and movement around the field. Quite often you find yourself facing backwards, stuck on the wall or on your roof and it can be very slow to recover as many players come to a stop, turn the right way and then use boost to accelerate. However, if you hold your power slide button when about to hit the ground, you don't stop. You continue sliding and if you combine this with a flip, you can actually continue as if nothing really happened. So put yourself in awkward situations in free play and then try to recover. Also learn to half flip and wave dash if you haven't already. There are plenty of tutorials out there and I went through them in some of my videos, so be sure to check them out and make this recovery training even better. Our fifth tip is extremely beneficial towards improving your dribbling ability and ball control in general. It essentially revolves around carrying the ball on your roof in free play for as long as possible. Whilst you don't do this in a game, it helps you understand how your car interacts with the ball, and when you need to flick or dribble the ball in game, you will find this much easier. So, what you want to do is simply put the ball on your roof and drive around the field for as long as possible until it falls off. Keep repeating this for around 10 minutes and hopefully you will get better. When doing this, use car cam and hardly any boost. Your movements need to be slight adjustments, not big ones due to boost, so use it very sparingly. You may struggle to keep it on your roof for a few seconds at the start, but trust me in saying that continual practice and refinement will make you more comfortable and competent. Finally, the last tip is something that only one's players generally acknowledge and try to fix, and that is power sliding correctly and effectively. Quite often, players do really bad turns where they sort of do a donut on the ground rather than a proper turn and use quite a bit of boost doing it. So, go into free play and practice driving towards the ball and then power sliding around it, stopping on the other side. Make sure you are facing the direction that you just came from and try to get as close to the ball as you can. This will help prevent you from overdrifting and underdrifting in games, which essentially means you won't feel really slow or bad when turning. You can also practice this when the ball is rolling or on the wall, as it has slightly different drifting physics. So if you practice power sliding in these three situations, you will become a power slide master in no time. So overall, here are the six drills that you should do on a daily basis. Firstly, you should practice your boost management and memorization by turning off unlimited boost in free play and trying to get as much boost from pads as possible. Secondly, you need to make a conscious effort to improve your mentality by utilizing positive self-talk and always being optimistic with your games, so try not to forfeit. The third drill was practicing your aerial car control in free play by creating various obstacle courses and methods to practice keeping your car under control in various positions. Then we had you working on your recoveries around the field by putting yourself in awkward situations and forcing yourself to recover. Also, mastering recovery mechanics such as wave dashes and half flips are essential to improving this. Drill number 5 was training your ball control and dribbling by trying to keep the ball on top of your roof whilst driving around for as long as possible. It will be very tough to begin with, but I have no doubt that everyone will be able to do it with just a little bit of time and effort. And lastly, we had power sliding effectively and properly which consisted of making tight turns with no over or under drift to prevent you from doing one of those donut turns where you go nowhere and waste a lot of boost. Alrighty guys, that just about wraps it up for the 6 drills to help you instantly improve in Rocket League. As always, I hope you enjoyed and learned something new to help you implement into your gameplay and to help you rank up. Other than that, be sure to like and subscribe with notifications on to be alerted for future uploads and streams. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Cheers.